WWTN. We start here. Nashville, Tennessee. Dateline. Metro Police, Nashville Metro Police, have released a new data that shows roughly half of the people they arrested this year had recently been charged with other crimes. Police data showing, and this is from News Channel 5, their report on the story, hat tip, because we give credit, even though a lot of times they won't. Police data shows 40% of the more than 17,742 people arrested through the end of September 2023 were on bond for other offenses or in some sort of pretrial release status. So that equals two, 3,770 people being released on bond, 3,300 people who went through pretrial release. One wonders if the Metro District Attorney, Glenn Funk, is willing to answer some of these questions that these statistics raise about how he is engaging in his business with regard to allowing people back on the street after they commit very serious crimes. Why do I bring this up? Well, if you've listened over the last week and a half, you know why. I bring it up because I want justice for Jillian Ludwig. And it goes above and beyond getting justice in the form of a conviction of Shaquille Taylor. There remain questions about why the hell Shaquille Taylor was on the street. And we've got a big clue as to why that was with these crime statistics. While the Speaker of the House, Cameron Sexton, who was on our show yesterday, and I held his feet to the fire about whether or not he was being fully transparent or honest with regard to legislation that he says could have kept Shaquille Taylor off the streets. They were nowhere near passing that legislation from the, in the House, much less the Senate. Instead of pointing the finger where I think it needs to start, and that is with the district attorney in this community, because other, other counties don't seem to have this trouble. Now, I understand Nashville's big. Nashville's bigger than most, bigger than every one of them, as a matter of fact. Shelby County and Memphis, a close second. Then comes Knoxville and some of the other larger communities in our state. The numbers are astounding. 3,770 people released on bond and 3,300 people who went through pretrial release were arrested again for additional crimes in this community. That accounts for 40%. Of all of the arrests through the end of September 2023, this year. Indicating to me that the DA is, in fact, soft on crime. Michael Patrick Leahy said he coddled the criminals. And now a woman is dead. An 18-year-old woman is dead. And we're not going to obviously look over the fact that the central person to blame is the individual that was willing to pull that trigger. Instead, we jump ahead of the story and all these folks out there on the left want to blame gun control and and the, the lack thereof in the city of Nashville and in the state of Tennessee. And they have none of them have any idea how this guy got his gun. I don't. Have you heard this? I looked. Have I missed it? Someone tell me I missed it. How did Shaquille Taylor get a gun? Shaquille Taylor did not walk into a gun store and buy a gun. Not to my knowledge. Almost half of the individuals committing crime in 2023 had been previously arrested for other crimes prior to the commission of subsequent crimes. They have the gun that he used, correct? I don't know. Because if they had it, it seems like all they would have to do is is check and see if it was stolen or not, or if he owned it. Or I did sleuthing this morning, and I was interrupted on a couple of occasions. I'm not faulting that, but I was trying to find the origins of the gun today, and I couldn't find it. 
If someone else has heard, please let me know. 615-737-9986. A lot of my friends on the political left want to simply point to that and go, how did he get a gun? I don't know. How did he get a gun? Was it stolen? Was it bought on the black market? Does the district attorney need to do a better job on prosecuting black market gun sale crimes? Folks, we've got a DA problem in this community, and it's time that we talked about it. And I'm not going to let this go. I'm not going to let the death of Jillian Ludwig go. It would be easier to do because she's not from our community. She came here to go to college, but I think that makes it more important than ever that we hang on to this. Friends and family are gathering in New Jersey today to remember the life of 18-year-old Belmont University freshman Jillian Ludwig. Visitation held tonight, funeral services and internment to follow at 9.30 tomorrow morning, according to an obituary published by her family and the attending funeral home. Obviously, we know how she died. And I will continue to ask why, 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 why? Even if that makes some folks uncomfortable. Yesterday, Cameron Sexton doubled down on his assertion that if the Senate had taken the special session more seriously, they may have been able to do something about this issue of allowing an individual who is incompetent to stay in trial out as opposed to putting him in a psych ward somewhere. We held Cameron's feet to the fire, as he stated. Originally, he said that they passed legislation. Then he backed off on that and said they presented legislation. Now he's backed off on that and said, well, it got through committee, but it needed to be further amended, something that can't happen once it reaches the floor. It's my understanding. In the meantime, the Senate has consistently said that they felt like their job was to do what the governor called them there to do, and that was it. And that they would take up consideration of other bills during the normal process in the General Assembly in January. In the meantime, an 18-year-old woman is dead. I've asked the question and have not gotten an adequate answer. What holds Shaquille Taylor in jail right now? Serious question. Oh, well, Matt, this is a serious charge. He was charged with serious things. In April, he was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. He was charged with shooting into a car. Same thing, right? And they let him go. They let him go. The DA didn't appeal when he had the opportunity to appeal. The judge in this case said, no, I don't think he's a danger to himself or to other people. I want to know who these doctors are that make these decisions. Why don't we find the names of these doctors? Why can we not speak to these doctors about their process? Why are they immune from criticism in all of this? A woman is dead as a result of their decision making. They're the ones that said that this man was not a danger to himself or other people. They're the ones that recommended that he be allowed out of jail. And I want to know who they are. I'm not going to come after them. I just want to question them. Don't you? A woman is dead. A woman is dead. And the damn DA doesn't seem to care. He's too worried CYAing, covering his own rump. I got to go. I know.